Uh, we are making an audio test. We haven't begun yet. Uh, we're waiting for a few more minutes and I would like to have a, uh, somebody can write a, a comment or a question so I can uh, um, do some audio test. Uh, thank you. Hello everyone. Good morning. We will start in a few, uh, in one minute, in one minute. I uh, hope everybody is listening uh, and the audio is uh, uh, great for your attention. In one minute. Okay, okay, we are ready to start. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and a good evening to some of uh, your attendees around the world. Uh, I would like to thank you for um, being part of this webinar. As you all know, I'm Dr. Isaac Mesa, uh, one of the three physicians here at San Aviv. My role right now is to share with you all some clinical pearls and uh, health tips, you know, to prevent cancer. But before I begin, I would like to thank uh, San Aviv for this opportunity to share with you uh, some uh, ideas that without the support of my mentors, and my colleague here, ten of you, I, I'm not going to be able. I, I was not going to be able to share with you this, especially in the area of dental psychology, nutrition, um, and chiropractor. I think they play a huge role in uh, the treatment of cancer. Why I say this is because um, when I was in. Uh, one of the conference in the IFM, the 17th uh, International Symposium of the Functional Medicine of Cancer, um, we we heard Dr. Jeffrey Bland speaking about how important cancer is. Uh, it's, it has to be seen as a chronic uh, condition, as a chronic degenerative disease. And primary care physicians um, are the first ones that we need to diagnose and to act opportunately uh, so we can prevent the worldwide epidemic that is expected in 2020, 2020. Sorry. So if somebody can write a question or in the chat, just just a message that uh, the audio is great and I'm and you're listening and you're listening uh, you're seeing my slides. I would like to to uh, to read that, please. Um, let me see, there you go. This is the Santa Fe medical team and as you all know uh, the main idea is to have uh, integrated physicians looking at uh, your uh, health in every angle. Uh, this is a physiological imbalance that started long time ago. I'm talking about chronic degenerative disease which is one of them is cancer heart disease, diabetes, and all these uh, dysregulations. So we all play a huge important role in bringing back that physiology. As I mentioned, cancer, um, when it's diagnosed, it's in most of the times late. It's already advanced to the lymph nodes. It's already affected uh, other organs. So my role is to tell you that I would like to to start uh, making an emphasis to the primary physicians to look for these areas. Screaming body or hypoacusia in a screaming body, it means that patients who come to the clinical settings or clinical uh, environment or for consultation with inflammation, with insulin resistance syndrome, with pain, fibromyalgia, or any other condition, including migraine, uh, that, that it's already saying that the matrix is toxic, that there is something going on in the milieu between the cells, among the cells, and the communication um, in, in in your body is uh, disrupted or, or it's, it's, it's imbalanced. So we have to listen to the body. Most of the time, in all patients with cancer or chronic degenerative condition, they have fears, they have anger, addictions, envy, or 
other type of stressors in their life that they haven't resolved. And then we are carrying that, or uh, patients are carrying that, um, and it's too much load for them. So the, that will affect the, the, the cortex of the brain, and that will send signal to the pituitary gland, and that will send a disruption in your thyroid and other hormones, and that will increase the toxicity in the milieu because the, the, the toxins are not moving if it's environmental toxins or heavy metals or, or just these unresolved emotions, this will impact enormously. And I will tell you what this will do to your cells in a minute. We also have, uh, there is a, a, a literature that it was published of an international cancer society that says that 50% of uh, cancer, they have a micronutrient deficiency in most of them. So we're talking about vitamin D, zinc, iodine, uh, and other nutrients, including vitamin K and other. So if we have a, a combination of this, uh, the body's screaming and telling us there is something wrong in the process, and other, you, you have unresolved emotions, and also we have a micronutrient deficiency, and our epigenetic or our genetic constitution that comes from our ancestors, uh, of MTHFR, or there is a liver detoxification environment in phase one or phase two, or phase three, there is a, a methylation or a superoxide dismutation or glutathione or any of the enzymes. This is a very important, any of the enzymes that helps you to protect oxidative stress or detox, if this is something that you don't have, this is more susceptible. We also are exposed to virus, fungus, bacteria, and parasites, especially in the area of the dental or the GI tract. I've been, I've been at Sanofi for a little more than seven years, I think seven years and five months or a little more, I don't remember. And what I come in, what I see most of the, my time in the uh, history, and the history of uh, medical history, is that most of the patients, they have a trigger. They have a trigger. They have a surgery, they have a, a virus infection that they always remember, they have a, a GI tract uh, infection that they always remember, they have carry on a mono infection or herpes infection, um, sinus or a lot of issues, could be dairy, could be gluten, could be soy, yes it can be, uh, leaky gut and all the, the gut dysbiosis and the imbalance. Um, there is also the uh, the scar disturbing or energy marine blockage that is most of the time there is also um, uh, energetic uh, disturbance which could be uh, caused by mouth a dental root canal a decay or something that is an abscess that also very important that is in your mouth that could be uh, creating a systemic inflammation or signaling chronic inflammation in your body to repair something that is not able to repair because there is lack, there is a lack of uh, uh, of uh, oxygen and nutrients to the tooth. So, the, also the energy part of the scar uh, from a past surgery or an accident also plays an important role of, on the meridian energy cycle. So, in this slide, I hope everybody can see that. Um, this slide, it's the matrix the milieu that um, my expertise is in elmotoxicology and uh, we're, where we look at, the, at this area as the main underline of any chronic degenerative disease. As you can see here, in the top of the picture, there is cells with a membrane on the basal membrane and also we have axons, neurons, we have, the, we have the sensitivity, we have the immune system, we have the, 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 the immune cells, we have the oxygen cells, we have the venous system, we have everything that we need to have and everything that is connected in one place, it's the matrix. Here we have everything connected, stem cells, you know, toxics, everything, because whatever comes here in nutrients, in the oxygen and nutrients comes in, through the capillaries, and it has to nutrient, it has to nourish the cells and oxygen in the cells, and also they have to come back, the toxic waste product out, 
and it has to go out. But when there is this imbalance, sorry, when, when this homeostasis or this uh, balance between the nutrients that comes in into the cells, if you're taking the USANA supplements by an, an idea, all the nutrients have to go through here, nourish the cells, give all the antioxidants to the cells, and those will come out. But when there is a lot of toxin here, when there is metals, when there is pH acid, when there is a lot of free radicals here, when there is a lot of damage into the matrix, then it then is when we have chronic hypoxia because the nutrients are not going to be able to get to the cells. What, so what's going to happen? The cell will, have, will find a way to survive. And how is that going to be? They will find a way to get nutrients and oxygen. They will use other pathways. They use, um, they use other type of fats or other type of pathways, proteins or uh, lactic acid. So that they, then, then, then start surviving with other uh, metabolism, and that's when cancer initiates. And most of these patients that they have toxins here or toxins in the milieu, they have symptoms. What kind of symptoms? Pain, fibromyalgia. They're the typical patient. They have, I have a shoulder uh, or uh, back problems or pain or discomfort. They don't know where they are coming from. Um, okay. And, all right, the next slide. This is the homotoxicology uh, phase of a health issue or toxins, the humoral phase, matrix, and the cellular phase. A patient with cancer already went from a humoral phase all the way back, all the way to the cellular phase. So that means in the respiratory tract, cock, expectoration, flu, kind of a symptoms or any uh, sinus, it goes from this to cough, to expect uh, mucus, to bronchitis, to other serious lung condition, and then you go to COPD, they go the emphysema, and carcinoma. So an idea. The, the toxins is going to go and affect the cells, and it's going to. So if we catch it in this time, we don't have to block the cough, we don't have to block the mucus production. We have to make sure that we help that physiological reaction of the body of the humoral phase to extract the toxins or the virus or whatever is there, we have to make sure. If it is a, a food allergy, whatever it is, we have to make sure that we deal with that instead of blocking the symptom. So most of the patients that come in our consultation as a primary physician is going to be pain, weakness, insomnia, bad breath, they got mood swings, they got foggy mind, they got fatigue, memory loss. So they have all these symptoms. And what do we do? We get pain medications. We get we get uh, energy, we, get, we drink uh, uh, energy drinks, uh, uh, sleeping pills, uh, we're using uh, um, uh, dental flushes with um, uh, uh, toxins, uh, fluoride and all those things that is it's very toxic for your iodine and for your thyroid uh, and it has a lot of other toxins. If you have foggy mind, if joint pain we use you see that um, high blood pressure, proton pumping inhibitors for uh, reflux, and all these. I know this is why, why I say it's very important to make sure that we deal with the symptoms correctly. Find the underline of them. So an idea, and I will, I will put all this information in a matrix. This is a matrix uh, of our tool. This is just a tool for us at Santa we are trying to make sure that we find the antecedents that predispose this patient. To the, the antecedents is something that is making the terrain. The terrain means the matrix of the milieu or, or the whole, uh, uh, everything that is between the cells. Um, so the terrain is something where we're growing the seed. The seed is a cancer. So we want to make sure that we find the antecedents that feed this terrain that make it susceptible for the seed to grow up, which is a cancer. Um, so if, if the patient has epigenetics uh, susceptibility, if they have a, an event in their life that they always remember, a uh, car accident, uh, a family issue, a situation where you haven't worked that out or deal with that, uh, if you still have the symptoms of fibromyalgia or foggy mind or, or any of those symptoms, 
I'm not saying that every patient that has fibromyalgia will, will develop cancer. I'm saying that if everything is connected, everything is, it makes sense if everything is the antecedents, it's the, the, the genetic, the environmental, the triggers, and everything makes sense. And, um, and, we, and we haven't resolved them correctly, then we get chronic uh, degenerative condition. But before we get cancer, we, got, we have symptoms. That it's allowing us to tell us there is something going on. And it's our duty to, to find them. And, and if it's a nutrition, a toxin, or uh, an emotion, or something uh, that is related to energy, or including a structural problem, we have to deal with that. It is so critical. So I prefer, I recommend people to invest in prevention than in cancer. Cancer is definitely, it's a family condition, a family disease, because when, when you get cancer, everybody's involved with that. Um, and is your time of awareness, it's the message um, that I would like to share with you, uh, because what works for you and what doesn't work for you, it's very important. Not Cancer is not unique. Cancer treatment is not for all patients. With uh, it's not the same for all patients. We have to individualize the treatment. We have to find what is the weakness and the capacity of each patient. We have to make sure that we select what works for them uh, and what doesn't work for them. Obviously, avoid them. We help help the patients uh, to have a, a balance in in, in in energetically. Deep breathing is very important. Uh, eat uh, whole foods, organic, uh, according to your uh, your needs, according to your uh, metabolic typing, or according to your 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 um, um, culture. We have to find what works for you. We have to find the correct diet for you. And if if we have to do an elimination diet for a few six months to a year it is going to be for your own health. So we have to find out if you're also gluten or dairy or, or soy intolerance or you have a leaky gut problem. Um, the pH water, that's a very hot topic that I, in, in a recent conference I had that uh, question. And, uh, we have seen here at Santa v, so many patients that are drinking alkaline water. And I'm not going, going, I'm not going deep in this topic because it's not my, my, uh, my strength, but I have seen uh, a lot of endoscopies uh, reported with alkaline gastritis and esophagitis and also uh, with problems with Barrett esophagus due to alkaline reflux from the bile. Uh, when we're drinking pH, alkaline pH water, we're changing the pH of the, of the stomach. It, takes, it depends on everyone. It's different to every patient. It might take seconds to convert that pH to an acid, but if you're not making that as acid pH in your stomach because you have other issues like uh, pylorus problems and all the things coming down and you're not making that or in the mucus you're not making the pH or there's some nutrient deficiency like zinc, you're not going to have never alkaline. So when you eat the food, you, you need the pH to digest. So that's when we have issues there. So just make sure that you, eat, you drink a clean neutral pH so you're able to con control your pH in different areas in your body. The urine is one pH, the, the, the stomach is one, the skin is another one. Every part of the body has different pH, and that's what we need to keep. If you want to uh, do an IV of alkaline substance, that's great. I, I prefer that, uh, that route. Um, personalized exercise, I think it's very important to avoid um, over oxidative stress from sports, lactic acid, uh, um, chronic hypoxia, mitochondrial uh, starvation. Uh, when patients are doing marathon running or uh, marathons or they're doing a, um, high uh, intense sports without having the proper nutrients into the body like antioxidants and uh, like acetyl L-carnitine with uh, good uh, uh, supplements and uh, maybe hyperbaric oxygen chamber and Doing all those therapies is going to be important. So I prefer, according to Mark Houston, one of my mentors in cardiology, he recommends uh, doing a um, resisting exercise and aerobic exercise uh, from the ratio 2 to 1. And I personally believe that resisting exercise is, is great. It doesn't stress the body uh, as much as uh, uh, running and, and, and marathons or, 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 or stressing the body for 
uh, with that kind of uh, aerobic exercise when they are in endurance. So uh, if you want to read about Mark Houston, it's great about the, the, the type of exercise that he recommends. It's perfect. Um, everybody should do her personal exercise. So go to the dentist, psychologist, uh, nutritionist. Um, uh, it is important to detect decay, uh, abscess, gum disease, inflammation, uh, mercury, and all those things because it's, it's, it's huge. We have seen it in seven years. Uh, and, it, and before that, I used to um, see other type of patients outside in my private practice. And uh, even if we give them 10 drugs, uh, I never saw any benefit uh, uh, as I am seeing right now dealing with all these situations. And please, this is a very important message. Uh, we, most of the patients are looking for great doctors. We also uh, are looking for great patients. You have to stick with one. If you go to a doctor and uh, you, you have a good match, you believe what it you, you believe it, you, you, you accept, you understand, you, you, you just visualize yourself where you are, what is the underline, and then you found you find the answer of your symptoms and you, you trust that. Make sure that you stay with that until you feel that you have a, achieved your goal. Don't look for other, you don't, don't confuse yourself by going to one doctor, to another doctor, to another doctor. And, and that makes it very difficult for the patient and the doctor. Um, internet is also a source that can confuse you more and can create a lot of uh, misinformation. So make sure that you go to the professional um, professionals counseling uh, or doctors to... Um, to follow the idea that you're looking for. Um, here at San Aviv, we are doing a prevention test, the most common, and then you can, you can also tell your doctor. You also can ask your doctor, doctor, can you do the C-reactive protein? Can you do the interleukin-6, the glycated hemoglobin A1C, cortisol, fasting glucose, fasting insulin, vitamins like A, D, E, and K, iodine challenge, challenge in the urine. All these nutrients are, uh, and, and, and tests are going to help you to understand where you are, if you are at risk or if you are not at risk. And if you are, according to this test, then what are the recommendations that you should follow? Most of the underlying cancer, it's inflammation, it's insulin, uh, resistance, high glucose, there is a nutrient deficiency, there is also um, sticky, the blood is very sticky, so there's a lot of fibrogen and fibrin, and there is this whole environment is just not great for uh, healthy cells to survive. What What's going on, it's when the pH gets to acid in the blood and the cells, you get some other health issues. So, uh, and that comes from uh, toxins, halides, and, and environmental metals and things like that, including the uh, stressors and the emotions. So this is a very simple test that you can do uh, in-house in any clinical physician. This is very simple and very easy to do. And it gives you a whole a lot of information. When the triglycerides are very high, when the HDL is low, when the total cholesterol is low due to statin drugs or due to bad diets, because also diet can create a low cholesterol. This is the patient that are high risk of cancer. Cholesterol is just a myth. It's no longer a risk factor. Cholesterol um, biomarkers goes beyond HDL, LDL, and total cholesterol. You have to, you have to address the size of the molecules uh, in order to decide if this patient will benefit from any specific treatment for um, cardiovascular risk. But uh, uh, why in 2012, after 10, 20 years of using uh, cholesterol uh, uh, lowering, drugs, uh, lowering drugs, like statin drugs, we're still, ha we're still having heart disease and more cancer, and it's expected to increase. It's no longer the risk factor, okay? This is just an, uh, an extra bonus uh, recommendation. <laughs> So the leptin and the cool blood is in the stools. There are things that you can do, like in the urine, the stool. You should find for a cool blood, and if you have it, then do a colonoscopy. If you're 40 years and older, do a colonoscopy. It's very, very simple. It takes 20 minutes or less, and, and it's, 
it's great. It's, it's great to have that done. Um, and um, this is more specific tests. This is the ones that can evaluate the genetic aspect. Telomerase, it's a hot topic. It's uh, uh, going around that the, the shortening of this uh, enzyme of this uh, telomerase, uh, it's the, the higher the risk for chronic degenerative conditions and aging and uh, having mistakes in the, in the, the deviation of, uh, in the cell um, multiplication or DVD, uh, uh, mitosis, meiosis. And so telomerates, it's a great test. If, you have, if you're taking supplements and you do the telomerates and you find out that you have ab above the average, keep doing that. That's great. We have tested some of the USANA uh, uh, here at San Aviv of telomerase, and they are beyond, above the average. Uh, APOE, um, uh, polymorphism for methylation, phase 1, phase 2, superoxidase mutation, glutathione, COMT for methylation. So all these um, uh, SNPs can be tested. Uh, metals in the urine, challenge test, it's also very important. Uh, we have to find out if you're a candidate for that test. The iodine challenge test is also very, very critical. Um, we know that we are now living in a, in a uh, endemic uh, soil with lack of iodine. There is no more support in, in the supplements uh, of molecular and potassium iodine, so we have to find a good source. Um, the estrogen ratio is very important for, especially for breast cancer and other type of cancers. We have to find out if the estrogen ratio is balanced. We have to find out if, if um, uh, mama print oncotype and protomic, all these genetic uh, markers are also uh, there in your body or not. We have to find out the copper, uh, evaluate copper uh, analysis. Uh, organic acid in the urine to find out your nutrient status or your deficiencies, essential fatty acid, uh, obviously BRCA1 and BRCA2, those are the tests that you can do to prevent uh, cancer. Uh, and if you do have some of these markers, then there are, there are uh, interventions that you can do uh, to prevent the cancer. Obviously magnesium, zinc, and selenium. Uh, insulin growth factor, it's very common in prostate, colon, and breast cancer food allergy for gluten, parasite in the stool, capoproctin for colon cancer, P53 and other uh, uh, markers for cancer, galactin-3. Uh, those, uh, those are tests that you can do in-house um, and uh, I think it's going to give you a great idea where you are and where you're going so you can make changes. And those changes are for quality of life and prevention. Image tests, we're using thermography, MRI, ultrasound, colonoscopy, and endoscopy, the upper endoscopy. If a patient has, um, uh, this is a non-invasive, non-toxic uh, uh, image test. Obviously, there is PET scan, there is CT scan, there's way more image uh, uh, out there, but they have side effects and they have other uh, toxic effects, especially radiation. Um, Microscopic blood analysis, it's my favorite. Um, I think uh, it gives it give us uh, huge information on, on, on rouleau formation on microorganisms like fungus. And personally, I believe that when, when there is fungus in, 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 in there, uh, heavy metals or there's a suspicious here uh, of heavy metals, it makes a lot of sense in cancer. It, it, I don't know, but I, I have seen very, very, and I would like to show you a picture. This is a picture. This is uh, the normal patient on the left where we see that there is no white space in the middle. Uh, that, I mean, there is a lot of agglutination. There is a lot of fiber and there is a lot of stress there. So there is, when I see this, I say, well, I have to make sure that I make all the tests necessary to find out if this is not cancer. If it is not cancer, there is a lot of cell destruction. There is a lot of uh, rouleau. There is a lot of... Uh, pH imbalance, there is a lot of enzyme deficiency. We have to make sure that we help this patient by nutrients and detox and gut cleansing and, and in order to prevent that this gets to a cancer. So if you do the etiology test to find out your genetic also in your iris, um, it makes us, there is three types of iris, uh, so we have to find out what is your weakness um, and also to strengthen those weaknesses. 
uh, either you're going to be liver flashes, uh, uh, it's a lymphatic system that we need to flush and help, uh, or it is uh, your endocrinal or other type of areas of opportunity um, different. Uh, energy test by energetic is definitely something that um, it's a prior. We have a full room of uh, acuscope and, and, uh, and uh, energy uh, bioenergetic therapies uh, that makes uh, like Rife and Ondamed and other type of uh, bioenergetic therapies that can balance your energy, um, especially in the milieu and the matrix that I talk about. The oxidative stress uh, test because we need to find out if the total antioxidant capacity is it's, uh, it's high and your oxidative stress is low, that is a great way to, or, or has a balance. We have to have balance. In life, every time that we wake up in the morning, there is a stress and you take your supplements and then that, there goes your total antioxidant capacity. So we're, we're playing that. It has to have a balance. Plethysmography, it's uh, for endothelial dysfunction. I also learned that from Mark Houston and Stephen Sinatra and other uh, cardiologists. They speak a lot about when we have endothelial dysfunction, there is chronic hypoxia, there is rigidity in your arteries, uh, and there is not a lot of nutrients and oxygen delivery to the capillaries, to the rest of, the, uh, of your organs. So uh, if you can detect this on time in a healthy patient, that it is incredibly important. So if, when we detect this by a three-minute test uh, um, into your pulse, we check HRV and expectoscopy, and we have, oh, sorry, sorry, in a, uh, HRV and plethysmography, and we have a lot of information about how your blood circulates. If you have rigidity, if you have this problem, we give L arginine, uh, we give um, other nutrient, folic acid, B vitamins, we increase this, we help the patient, and that's enormously, that's a high impact. Spectroscopy for cancer, also for tumors, also are, it's, it's important. Um, so um, for now, I think that's my last slide. Uh, I definitely would like to thank you all for listening uh, this uh, short presentation on how to prevent cancer. Um, my last uh, message to you all, uh, attendees, is that make sure that you find relief, uh, find grounding, means vitamin G from the ground, it's important to balance your energy uh, every time that the heart beats, every second that the nutrients that you're taking oral, they need to get to the, to the tissues, to the delivery to the cells, and the cells need to detox. So you need the vibration of the earth, mother earth, to make this happen. Um, I believe that connection with animals are also important for some of us, some of others is not that important, but definitely the grounding is, it's, it's, it's huge. So barefoot, uh, walking in the grass, uh, enjoy life, and, um, and have fun. I would like to thank my family, my wife, and my uh, young boy, Fidel, um, for this happiness, happiness in my life. And... Uh, He's just uh, five year old, uh, five month old, sorry, and it's a blessing in, in my life. I would like to thank also uh, Senevi for letting me share with you all this message. And if anybody has questions, I will like um, I will be very happy to uh, answer and uh, guide you. And if we don't have the answer, well, we will look for that. We will find it. Okay, so. Uh, I'm, this is my first time that I work with this uh, webcast. I have here um, attendees and questions and, and chats. And if uh, anybody has a question, I think they just need to write uh, down in your keypad the question. Uh, and I will be happy to answer that um, right now. Okay, let me see. This is uh, okay. Uh, I will answer this in Spanish because there is 
Uh, okay, okay, okay. This is the situation. I will answer this. They are saying in Spanish uh, uh, because there are also some uh, 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 Mexican uh, friends. Eh, muchas gracias eh, por las felicitaciones. Se escuchó muy bien. Gracias. Si tienen alguna pregunta en español, con gusto la puedo atender en español y en inglés. I'm just, I just said that thank you for all these Spanish uh, Mexican friends that uh, sent me a, a, that everything went fine. And I think so, yes, this is going to be recorded for the future. It's going to be there for Sanaviv. Uh, um, anybody who goes to the web, uh, web uh, in the website of Sanaviv, you will have that information there for view and for listening, most likely, yes. Okay, we have some friends from Singapore. Uh, I'm very happy. It gives me shields. Uh, congratulations uh, that you... And I just uh, think that uh, everybody who's taking care of their health, taking uh, supplements in USANA and, and they are proactive, uh, we are not going to be part of the statistics of, uh, of the following uh, uh, chronic uh, uh, decade. We're doing a good job. Congratulations from everybody that is taking care of their health. Okay, let's see. So Okay, I have a question here, um, and uh, like I said, this is a very sensitive topic about pH of the water. The consensus that we th that we are now uh, having among us here at San Aviv is that pH um, should be neutral. If you're drinking, okay, let's put it this. If you're drinking natural pH water, because I, I heard that also the question in the in some other conference, and if it's working for you, if it's working for you, and it's you have at least time between you took the alkaline water and you're eating, and it's that enough time for you to have a good digestion, continue that way. But there are people who are drinking pH alkaline water, and they're just eating half hour later and they're still not acid in the stomach for digestion. They are not ready. So it's very controversial. So if you do a Heidelberg test, if you check your pH when you're drinking the water, you're checking your pH and your pH is acid 20 minutes later, that means that you have good pH, uh, good pH balance in your stomach. And I don't think it's going to stress her more. I think it's that's how you are. You have good sing, good good background, good uh, stomach uh, function. But there are people that are not ready to drink alkaline water, especially cancer patients. They have all damage already by radiation. They have damaged their cells from uh, uh, chemotherapy, and they want to drink pH uh, alkaline water. And you definitely, I think it's sometimes it's worse than the, the remedy. So my personal opinion is ask your doctor to to have a. a a uh, better answer uh, because every patient is, is different. Okay, I hope that I answered that question uh, there. Okay, they're asking, okay, you want to see the slide? They're asking for a slide of a, um, I hope uh, you're there, still there. Um, this is the, the slide they're asking uh, for this slide, they want to see it again. You can Google it. Uh, you can find it in in, in the heal .com in U.S. and you in Mexico and other parts of the world. Uh, this is in, this is the principle of this is from Germany. Um, uh, so this is the six phase table. We have the humoral phase. We have the matrix phase. We have the cellular phase. That means the the the, the deepest the toxins 
like pesticides, chemicals, heavy metals, the deepest that they go and affect the cell, the far away that you will go from the reaction phase right here, excretion phase, sorry, it goes all the way to differentiate, uh, de-differentiate phase, which is the cellular phase. That means that it's already the cell, it's already affected. Right here, you have excretion phase and you have umeral phase. So that means that inflammation phase and numeral this is the early, early part of the symptoms. This is urinary, urinary tract infection. This is frequent urination, and this is the... So, but if we move forward, we have cancer. Uh, does, does that make sense? So early stage, cancer stage, or severe, uh, uh, like, uh, neurological problems. I hope that uh, uh, that answer the question that it was there. Um, what was it? Uh, I, I'm not saying the, the, the names of the people who's asking the question, but if you want me to say a message, just let me know. <laughs> that's a good one. A standing, that's a standing on concrete, it's um, barefoot works for grounding. Um, I don't know, my personally, any... Um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, any studies that has been done yet, as I my knowledge, but my answer is yes. Uh, barefoot, uh, the the grounding and, and and but at least go to the ground or uh, s sand, whatever it's better. It's obviously sand, dirt, um, um, and the grass, which is connected right now to the ground. Uh, but uh, uh, my answer is it, it also works if you're standing in the in the in the concrete. Um, my personally, uh, enjoy, I enjoy to go to the ranch and, and to the horses and animals and, and sometimes work, work, walk uh, barefoot and that's also very, very good. Okay, yeah, the qu next question is what, uh, how do we find out what is our metabolic eating type? And it's a good question. I think of it, the first thing is if you don't find a nutritionist, uh, a functional nutritionist around where you live and uh, that can give you this test, then you can come to San Jose and we, are, we will be happy to do it here. Um, or you can send an email to us uh, in asking that referral, somebody that we can refer a, a, a clinician nearby to do the metabolic typing. Y nuevamente, gracias por las felicidades uh, que me escribieron en español. Uh, I'm just uh, saying that thank you for the uh, congratulations in Spanish that they wrote. Um, is there, yes, it's, yeah, you can ask a specific question from cancer. Here it says, uh, is there a way that I can ask a specific question for cancer? And I, I say yes, I don't see any problems. I don't know. The time is uh, very important. Uh, we will have to respect your time too. So I probably will answer two more questions. Um, all that depends on the, let's see. The question is, if someone has been diagnosed with colon and liver cancer and the colon cancer was removed but it remains in the liver, what tips do you, oh, what happened here? What tips do you have. Okay. This is a, a very important uh, and frequent question. Most of a, a colon cancer, uh, uh, they have liver metastasis. Why? The circulation of the colon, everything that you eat or how the circulation, uh, lymphatic, venous, and arterial flow, and this is all about how the circulation is. Most of the circulation from the small intestine, from the small intestine, and everything that you absorb goes to the to the the venous system, and it goes to the liver also to be clean. And um, that's why everything, including the colon, if I do a, a ozone shot in the colon, it goes directly to the liver because the system how it delivers the message to the liver is right there. So most of the patient with colon cancer, if you go ahead and just do a surgery and you remove the colon cancer, um, but and then you, you attach them together. 
Uh, but if you, if we don't do intervention treatments to to deal with this stem cell, cancer stem cell, that, that means that your colon cancer during the surgery or after the surgery by manipulating the system, it can go to the cells and, 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 and go to the lymphatic system or the venous system and it goes to the, to the liver. And that's where it finds another a good terrain to survive. And um, why? Because in the liver we have sugar, we have lactic acid, we have all the great enzymes and things that can grow. And it's a great terrain to, to, to grow. So this patient, my, my, my recommendation is uh, most of these, uh, if, if they haven't do any uh, celora or any type of low-dose chemotherapy, um, either you can do IPT, you can do metabolic, uh, metabolic uh, cancer therapy. That's new, a, a new way to, to, to deal with this. Um, in the thousand letter of this, uh, uh, the last, uh, uh, in August and to September, thousand letter, if uh, everybody knows that, uh, there is a very important topic of cancer and aging of a metabolic approaches. You can, uh, you can listen, to, uh, you can read that, and you will have a lot of answers. But I specifically recommend for liver cancer in this situation that you go and do uh, the Celora. Uh, there are some patients that respond very, very good. In combination with that, I, I will say vitamin D, iodine, and other nutrients it will be important. My recommendations are not, right now that I'm saying is not to cure the cancer, is to deal the systemic effect of the stem cell. And we have to find out what type of therapies deal with stem cells, uh, cancer stem cell, either thymus extract, uh, it can be uh, uh, other type of um, uh, uh, dendritic cell vaccine. Uh, we have to make sure that we use some immune modulators like ozone therapy. Um, and other type of uh, vitamin C therapies and oxidative therapies. Uh, but there is just the answer. It's, uh, there is a lot of patients respond very well to this type of cancer. But once you, you do therapy like IPT or other type of therapy, you have to make sure that you deal with the stem cell because if not, then it grow again in the liver or other parts of the body. So taking away the tumor is not the answer. It's hitting the stem cell. You have to go all the way deep to the matrix, to the milieu, to the uh, areas where everything is beginning that I just mentioned in this lecture. So hyperbaric, hyperthermia also are a great way to combine a good modalities in cancer therapies. I don't know right now if I'm missing anything uh, related to this situation, but um, in the history of chemotherapy, uh, uh, we talk about um, Taxols and, and, and almost the taxols are coming from plants. So there are good plants that makes a good effect. But I recommend low dose chemotherapy. It can be IPT, uh, insulin potential therapy. It's also is what uh, is IPT is means about. And in the thousand letter, they are speaking about how to make the pH. How oh, sorry, they are blocking uh, uh, Mark Rosenberg. They are, he's blocking uh, seven uh, pathways uh, in the cells to make the self acid inside and promote apoptosis through that. It's just, uh, it's a new idea. It's something that is growing. Uh, I don't have experience. I don't have experience also using IPT or insulin potential therapy, but I know some good doctors there are having good results. Um, uh, personally, we, we, our philosophy here at San Aviv and sharing Dr. Wen's philosophy, we're trying to change that terrain. We want to make sure that we give, provide nutrients and oxygen to the, the patient, promote immune modulation through vaccines and, and, and cell therapy, and uh, give back the nutrition deficiency. If it's iodine deficiency, we're trying to get this from the underlying issue. So yeah, I, we recommend to do some low-dose chemotherapy, either IPT, metronomic dosage, or other ways because we will have to, we have to hit the tumor and then make sure we repair the damage as well with the underlying issues of that. So curcumin and other uh, nutrients, uh, they, they are so great for blocking a lot of pathways of inflammation and, and, s s and s cell uh, signaling that promotes cancer, and especially stem cells. So um, metformin, it's great to do, to do that. So there is a lot of tools that we have here to deal with the stem cells. So I hope I answered your question. <laughs> I think uh, we are almost uh, done here. 
Um, on breast cancer, I just mentioned, I think metformin plays an enormous, uh, enormous role uh, and uh, other uh, estrogen uh, detoxifiers in the liver uh, as well with um, thymus and other cell extracts uh, are great for boosting the immune system. Um, I don't think here uh, chemotherapy is great. I think here in this situation I see I, uh, low dose, very low dose. Uh, after you do a sensitivity test, you have to find out what kind of a low dose chemo. We're talking about very low dose, not the current dosage for uh, Western medicine, but you have to find out that. Um, we also have uh, a hyperthermia with Ukraine, amygdalin, um, and other type of uh, nutrients that we can recommend. But uh, I think hyperthermia combined with uh, cell extract also is good, and ozone. Vitamin C, as you, can, as you know, uh, it comes in the history and it's been very helpful too. Uh, yeah, they're asking to show the, the previous slide of, uh, of uh, microscopic blood analysis and I will be very happy to show them and this is, uh, this is the slide. I will continue to answer two more questions and I will have to be go, uh, uh, leaving because I have to see a patient. Um, Mm, that's an interesting question here. I have a very large vertical surgical scar from an acute peritonitis that crossed right besides the, my nerve, my, uh, navel. Uh, navel. Uh, this was when I was 10 years old and uh, is now 30 years ago. How do I know it's not toxic scar? Okay, that's a great question. I would like all to listen to this question. Um, Personally, I believe that first you have to find a kinesiology, an expert in energy to muscle test and find out um, if that scar is affected, if it's affecting you. Not all the scars are wrong. Not all the scars is affecting. But if it's in the middle of the body, it's definitely making a, 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 a chakra uh, or energy blockage. So you have to find out a good chiropractor to evaluate. If either we can do it here with our chiropractors in kinesiology to muscle test, find out if that's something that it, it needs to be treated. And if it is, we use neurotherapy, procaine. And we inject the scar and we uh, relieve that blockage. And that is going to prevent uh, health uh, problems in the future if, if it is, if it is, uh, like I said, this doesn't make, this, this is, if it is the problem, doesn't mean that you will have a disease in the future. But if you do have the genetic, the epigenetic, the environmental, and then you, you also have the trigger of the scar, then it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I don't know if that, that makes sense with that question. Uh, because it's difficult for me to, to, to see your eyes or your smile or your, your head moving like a, agreement. <laughs> I don't know if everybody agrees. But it, we have to test and find out that this is uh, um, a problem for you. Okay? Are you all ready? And... I, 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 uh, there is a uh, question in Spanish. Uh, I'm, 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 I probably will answer that in Spanish. Um, ¿Qué es lo que hace usted? ¿Qué es lo que hace? ¿Qué es lo que usted hace personalmente para prevenir el cáncer? Um, personalmente, el equilibrio este, principal es tener paz interna, eh, espiritual, eh, energética y eh, en tu entorno, que lo que hagas estés bien y que no haya un pleito entre eso. Eh, esa es la principal este, eh, la idea que, que tengo, que mi filosofía, la, el alimento equilibrado, eh, sin excesos y lo más importante, eh, aparte de eso, es tomar mis suplementos. Yo me tomo mis suplementos de Usana, me tomo mis esenciales, eh, Health Pack, y en algunos casos este, el epacil, que es el del hígado. Mi genética, por la genética de la iridología, eh, tiende, tengo a, un, a tener este, vulnerabilidad en el hígado, entonces hay que trabajar en el hígado, hacer desintoxicación de vez en cuando para que se libere todas las toxinas del hígado y este, obviamente eso es lo, lo que... Este, generalmente yo no hablo de mi persona, pero bueno, aquí les paso un tip. Uh, so in English... I uh, just answered a question in Spanish that uh, they asked me, what, I, what, I do, what do I do to prevent cancer? And um, I said, uh, relief 
find relief and peace in, in your life, happiness, uh, it's very important, your supplements and uh, exercise is very important too, I do exercise, I'm a semi-professional basketball so I do some resisting exercise and have fun in, in sports. Obviously the, the grounding is very important, which I like horses. Okay, all right, well I have, I have to be going, I have patient, uh, I'm sorry that I didn't answer most of the questions, but please uh, send that email and I will be happy to answer them, okay? Peace, happiness, uh, love to all, and uh, from all over the world, um, I hope I can be in the next webinar soon, so I can share some of the uh, topics in prevention. Bye-bye now.